Hi there, my name is Simon. I'm a solutions engineer at Sentry and we'll be talking about monitoring errors and slowdowns across JS applications. Sentry is designed squarely for developers. We'll tell you when your code is slow, when it's broken, and clues on why. We're connecting the end user experience as closely as possible to the developers that make those experiences happen. With the Sentry SDK on your apps, we'll alert the necessary team members and developers when those errors and slowdowns happen, let them make those commits and the changes to optimize that developer and customer experience. The Sentry platform is divided into these five pillars here. We'll be focusing on the first three on the left. So that's the error monitoring, performance monitoring, and release health side of Sentry. Now to get started, we would be on the Sentry documentation page. Uh, we support all major languages and frameworks button here to get into all of that. But prior to place, we have Node.js in the front page. To get started with that, the install on the packages that are necessary with a yarn add or npm install and configure with Sentry init, including that DSN. So that's a data source name. It'll tell your application where to send error and transaction events to, and that's your project in Sentry. Now I've got an app here for us to take a look at together. We'll generate some transaction and some error data, and we'll take a look at how that's represented in Sentry, how it's organized by releases as well. Now to get started, we'll click into browse products to take a look at the, the available plant things to buy. And it's taking a few seconds here. We'll take a look at that slowdown momentarily, but I'm going to finish up with this user flow, added a couple items to our cart, checking out to purchase them, right? We've encountered an error, surprise, surprise, but let's take a look at how that's represented in Sentry, right? Now I've got a Slack uh, alert set up. So in a few seconds here, we'll be notified of the error that we just triggered from that checkout process. Click into this notification with you know some context behind the scenes as well of what just happened, but let's take a deeper look. So from that link, I'm taken to the who, what, when, and where of the error that we just experienced together, right? So this error, this 500 error has happened 160 times to 60 users, some context about its frequency over the past day, 30 days, first and last seen across releases. So that's really helpful. And also some aggregated tag information on the right over here. So we've taken all 160 times this error has happened, gotten some contextual data and heat mapped organized it as you see here. Customer type is small plan, large, medium, enterprise. It's affecting all our users. So we wanna take a deeper look into that. Now let's focus on the middle pane here. So these are the details of one of the 160 times this error has happened. We can page through to other ones, right? In any case, let's take a look at these tags. So the key value pairs for this specific occasion, Mac OS, Chrome, it was a large customer, some other details. But what we care most about um, at this point is probably the stack trace. Without Sentry, we'd be dealing more with this minified, uh, not human readable stack trace. But since we've uploaded our source maps at build time, we see this very beautiful human readable stack trace and we can take a look at the exact line of code where it happened. Looks like the response from the back end was not okay. So we can deep dive a little deeper into that. We've also got a timeline of activities that led up to our error, which we can filter by as well. Now, just going back to the top of this issues page, I see there's a connector to a child event. So that's our node backend. Now clicking into that, we can see uh, everything that we just reviewed, but now from the backend, right? The who, what, when, and where. Um, with the stack trace as well, we've got our node stack trace and we got an error because there was not enough inventory for our product because the inventory item count and quantities just didn't really weren't happy together okay so we can work with our backend team figure that out great so that's the first item here error monitoring let's jump into performance so going back to our front end and our performance tab we got our web vitals right away so that connects that end user experience to what we as developers care about and what is actionable for us. Our products transaction, which took a few seconds to load as we noticed earlier, that list of products, it's failing on our largest content, contentful paint uh, web vital. So let's dive a little deeper into that. We've got our transactions table, look into a transaction summary of how it's been performing over the past day. Uh, we can adjust the time frame, or this is a really fun graph to, to work with and uh, highlight over a specific period. But in any way, uh, in any case, we can 
what we care about is getting into the details of a specific transaction. So clicking into that, we have the operation breakdown of what just happened or how it's performing against uh, our web vitals. So it's failing on that LCP, 10.6 odd seconds uh, over that 11.18 total transaction time. Super problematic, but a lot of the operations looking down is not taking too much time. We see this one HTTP client operation that's taking 10 and a half ish seconds. So let's dive into that and look at what operations are happening, right? Here we can see that there are some database queries, some select statements that are sequential and we can work with our backend team to figure out how to optimize that, reduce that LCP problem and improve that uh, transaction time. Great, so that's two checks off the box here. Now let's take a look at release health. So we organize our details about our projects in releases. We can sort by specific uh, properties as well. And we use we support semantic versioning. Here we've organized it by 22.x uh, releases. And we can adjust to see details about like our pr production environment over the past 14 days in the terms of sessions or users are available as well. In any case, once you uh, filter according to that, we get all the details about these releases, right? So our crash free rate in the latest version is 84% adopted, 7% of the time, that's okay. Crashes aren't too bad, but jumping into a specific one, we get the specific details about these, trans uh, about these releases. So we can organize by different series of graphs, take a look at the issues as well, and the regressed issues, unhandled ones, figure out which ones to delve into, and go back to um, where we started with the issues page and also take a look at how it fits into the transactions behind the scenes as well. So in this case, two transactions, two errors, everything kind of just fits together with Sentry uh, in the ways of going into a release, taking a look at the errors behind the scenes and also the performance details all connected together. Great, thank you so much for spending time with me, taking a look at these errors and slowdowns across my JS apps.